All right, hello everyone. This is Hunter Doyle from The Take. I'm here with Dan Rodarmo today, and we are interviewing Jaden Hill, a right-handed pitcher from LSU, one of the top prospects for next year's draft, and mean played for a great program, or still plays for a great program at LSU. Um, I'm an LSU fan, uh, not from Louisiana, but really admire their athletics, so this is an honor for me to, to interview one of their athletes. So thank you so much for being with us, man, and for this opportunity. We really appreciate you. And just tell us, like, how you're doing, man, and how quarantine's been for you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me, for one. And, man, it's uh, it's been tough. It was tough at first, you know, getting used to the routine of everything. Um, but I've definitely been able to take advantage of it. You know, I've been working out, throwing, and just doing whatever I can do. Yeah, for sure. You got to gotta get creative sometimes, too. I know we were talking yeah. to, to a guy who's, like, lifting trash cans or, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> For those of, for the, those of our audience who don't know about you, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background and kind of how you got into baseball as a kid. Ooh, um, you know, I grew up in a small, small town in Arkansas. Uh, sports has always been something for me. I've always loved sports. I always had a passion for it. But, um, you know, I was, I was more of a football guy growing up. You know, I played baseball. I wanted to play all sports, play baseball and basketball. But, you know, I wanted to play football. But then, you know, the baseball thing started coming around, started throwing harder, started getting, you know, some people's attention. And then once I kind of weighed out the options, I was like, you know, this baseball thing pretty fun. It's pretty cool. And I just figured, you know, I, I had the better opportunity in uh, being successful at it. So, you know, I shot all for it. Awesome, man. By the way, I really like that shirt. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Uh, <laughs> it's my guy. You know, he does a whole positive vibes movement. Oh, that's so, you know, dope. I'm supporting him. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Yeah, so you were kind of talking about it. Uh, you're a multi-sport athlete and you were talented in high school. So kind of tell us about how, like, maybe your back, your football background or basketball background uh, has really contributed to you playing baseball. Um, definitely the intensity of it. Just um, my competitiveness of wanting to get guys out. You know, um, you, can't, you can't play football and, and be weak-minded. You know, and baseball is a real mental sport. And so uh, just being able to carry that same energy, you know, that same uh, – competitive nature onto the diamond you know it just helped me tremendously because it's hard you know but um uh, that with the fans going and things like that it just you know it just comes out of you yeah definitely that's that's great to hear um so if you were to say maybe a coach in high school or right now who has been a role model to you or influential to you uh is that anyone stick out in particular uh as far as a coach yeah um yeah for sure uh in high school i had a coach's name is uh coach matt richardson and um, he was someone who came in and um, he just always had the perfect guidance for me. You know, he, um, he it was always things outside of the sport. You know, he always taught me the bigger picture in life and uh, how important things are off the baseball, football field, however you want to say it. And that was something that really stuck out to me. You know, he was uh, a mentor for me. He helped me um, get comfortable with who I am. And, you know, go out and do things, go out and mentor kids and just look at the bigger picture of things rather than there's uh, rather than just football. He was my football coach. So that really helped out a lot for me. He was definitely a mentor for me. For sure. I'd love to hear that. Um, and kind of going on to like graduating high school. I mean, um, that whole senior year can be a tough decision process for anyone, um, whether you're a student athlete or not, especially for student athletes. I mean, you got a lot of offers, mm -hmm. especially like you're a multi-sport athlete too. So kind of talk to us about the decision process and, and what really made LSU appealing to you. Um, I originally, I wanted to go play both uh, in college, but I, I injured my right collarbone in my senior year of high school playing football. So I kind of threw that out the way. And uh, I kind of knew once I came to LSU, just the um, the fan base, the just the feeling that the people had here, it was just like no other. And so it was just undeniable that uh, LSU was for me. I just felt at home. The people made me feel at home, and it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. It's awesome, man. Good to hear. And, I mean, we know every athlete goes through times of self-doubt and adversity. You just talked about um, breaking your collarbone. So just kind of talk to us about times of self-doubt. It can be an injury or just anything in life in general um, that you went through and that you kind of had to overcome. Right. Um, that was definitely one of my biggest ones um, in high school because – Everything was going good for me. I, I, I played in an uh, Under Armour All-American game. I played in the Under Armour All-American game. Uh, so, you know, everything was starting to build up for me, and then that happened. And it kind of went to a downfall because I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to come back and play baseball because that's what I wanted to do at the next level. And so, you know, I, I definitely got in the gutter. 
for a while, but uh, it also taught me, you know, patience that, um, you know, things happen for a reason. They helped me come in, come in here because after my freshman season, I um, got injured. And so, you know, it just kind of taught me, you know, the patience of things and just how to, you know, control what you can control and, you know, stuff like that gets out of hand. So that really helped out a lot. Great answer, man. Yeah. So can you talk about, uh, you kind of already mentioned it, but can you talk about the impact of the coaching staffs you've had throughout your career and how important it's been in your improvement each season? Uh, Definitely from my high school coach, you know, uh, he was able to, teach me the other side so it matured me at a young age you know I started seeing the bigger picture and things and I started figuring out things it just wasn't all about me and so uh that matured me it helped me take advantage of all situations and work harder and just you know just a little bitty thing to start taking advantage of it so they helped carry on to college and then here um I learned that it's a business you know that uh you know playing ball is a business you have to produce and uh in order to produce you know you have to put in the work beforehand and so just being prepared and just being able to give it my all and no matter what I'm doing whether it's the training room the um whether I'm getting therapy stretching whatever it is just give it my all so that I'll be able to produce when it's my time definitely maturity and hard work is some of the most important things in anything really um sure. so can you tell us about your pitching arsenal and what might be your favorite or best pitch to throw true I mean I would have to go my fastball for sure. You know, the fastball is always fun, especially when they're missing. And so uh, I'm definitely going to go fastball. But, uh, you know, I like to mix in a couple other things. I like to throw my change up a lot if it's working to a lefty. You know, that's fun to see if they're missing it, then it's fun to watch. But uh, other than that, I definitely stay fastball change up if I could. Okay. <laughs> awesome, man. We had, we had a pitcher the other day tell us that his favorite pitch to throw was a strike. So, I'm sure you love the oh, that's, that's, a, hey, that's a great answer. <laughs> man, yeah. I'm good with anything that they swing and miss. If they swing and miss, hey, I'm winning. <laughs> exactly, man. Um, and so, I mean, baseball is a very mental game. You kind of mentioned the intensity of football and how that's helped you with baseball. Um, especially mm -hmm. being, being on the mound, it's a very, very mental aspect of things. And so just kind of talk just about your mental preparation each day and before each practice even. Um, coming in. You know, it, it was just you, you didn't want to lose. You know, you didn't want to uh, go out there and, you know, mess up, you know, for your teammates. So, you know, you just have to be mentally prepared for uh, one thing. It's a big part. But just going out there knowing that um, you have a team behind you, that you have coaches, you have fans, you know, you have the support, and that you just need to go out there and give it your all. And so uh, I definitely had that. I think this coming up here, I've been on a big meditation, you know, type thing. I've been learning how to meditate and things like that, you know, speak things into uh, existence, you know, positive vibes, just keep, you know, positive energy going and think things through. And so I think that's going to be a real part of my upcoming fall and my upcoming spring. Definitely, man. I learned, I learned a little bit about that in sports psychology. It's really amazing what you can learn at the, the NCAA level and just with your coaches and how to, how to really sure. like, just visualize things and just have them happen too. Um, and so I kind of read online that you're a big Marcus Stroman guy. Um, I don't Oops. know if I read that. Awesome, man. Glad to hear that. So would you say you kind of admire your game after him or is there like a couple other pitchers that you really admire or like um, model your game after per se? Uh, as far as my game, no, I would say, you know, I just have my own game. You know, I was always an athletic pitcher. Uh, and so I really haven't found anyone that my game, you know, I model my game after, but everything else that he had, I try to model everything, his hard work, his dedication, his intensity, his energy he brings, you know, the, you know, the smile on his face, just the way it impacts, you know, it impacts me through the TV. So there's no telling what he does to his teammates and just knowing that he's giving it his all and you can see it. And so I try to take that dog mentality and put it into my game. Of course, man. Yeah. So if you were to say, it might be a little bit tough to admit, but who is the toughest hitter you've faced so far? Who, uh, honestly, I don't know names. I don't know any names in, uh, whenever we play. I, I can tell you, last, like, I remember last names and jersey numbers. But um, I was, I've had to say someone from my own team. I'm going with, I would say Daniel. Daniel Cabrera has been hard. I can, I can never get my good luck going with him. Okay. And, um, who else? K, K Beloso. K Beloso is kind of tough. Those are two guys that I really have to come with it. And I would have to say my teammates, they're, they're definitely the best hitters because going against them, it's like whenever you're playing, it's almost, you know, it's almost easy in a way, but we got some good hitters on our team. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's great to hear. 
And what would you say has been the importance of locker room chemistry during your career? Oh, it's huge. Um, it's been huge because I know that the guy, every guy next to me is willing to go out there and give it their all for me. Because, you know, we have the weight. We, we work out together at 6 a.m. We do all these things together. You know, we hang out outside of uh, practice. And um, that just lets you know that you have to go out there and give it your all for them because they're doing the exact same for you. And so being able to have teammates that have your back, you know, it means the world. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so, I mean, you kind of did talk about this as, as well already, but uh, you've been complimented on your confidence, your maturity. Um, do you take pride in how you handle yourself and just being a leader on your team? Uh, 1,000%. That's a role that I've uh, been trying to – put myself in more and more as I get older and as I learn more about baseball um but I definitely do it's uh, just being comfortable with myself being who I am and you know just letting it all out on the field and so that's definitely something I've definitely tried to uh, take advantage of of being in that spot you know of, of a team leader and things like that you know it's been it's kind of been hard for me because I was young I didn't play much uh, due to injury but I'm, I definitely want to take over that role this year Awesome. Sure. That's a great mindset. Yeah, really respect your mindset and your, your confidence. And I mean, just the level of maturity you hand yourself with from what we've watched on film, too. So um, just moving on to the baseball aspect of things a little bit. Uh, you've kind of you spent two short seasons at LSU, obviously, like, you know, the injury and the pandemic have cut things. Yeah. But you've um, so you spent a little time as a starter and reliever in, in your short time. So do you kind of see yourself as one or the other um, at the next level or you just kind of like wherever, whatever happens, happens, and I'm just willing to do what, whatever. Uh, you know, you would think coming in from high school, you know, you kind of you want to be that guy, you want to be that starter, that 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 big man. But at the, but when, once you get here, and you know, like we were talking about the team uh, camaraderie, you just you just want to go out there and play. You know, you just want to go out there and compete in whatever role coach tells you to. You just be ready to go out there and get the ball and get out, whether it's one out, two outs, or whether it's twenty seven. Just however many, you know, you just want to go out there and give it your all. And so that's 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 where I'm at now. I just want to play. You know, I've had one season cut short because of injury, and then I've had another one cut short. And, man, I honestly – I could care less. I just want to play. Yeah, for sure, man. And and talking about those – these past two seasons, man, I mean, it's tough. I mean, um, yeah. coming out, you're coming into your first year, you're excited to play, and then you got the injury. And then, obviously, this year we just talked about the pandemic. And so – I mean, those, that's very tough, man. We're, we're on your side. We're brain free, man. We know it's tough. And we just want, want to know, like, what's your kind of your mindset in overcoming these obstacles? And, like, how motivated are you to, like, really show out next year and just, like, give everything you got one last time if, it's, if it is the last time with LSU? Right. Um, definitely what I was speaking on earlier, just controlling what I can control. You know, I can't control this pandemic, and, um, and I can't control the way the season turned out, but I can't control what I'm doing now and what I'm doing to prepare for the upcoming season. And I know now that I'm, I'm working out every day, I'm doing my training, I'm doing my throwing, and I'm doing everything I can so I can be best prepared for whenever the season comes back around. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, Daniel, yes. you want to get the next question? Yeah, for sure. Um, so what is your biggest aspect of your game that you want to improve on this upcoming year? You talk about, you know, all the things that you're working on. What's the biggest thing you want to improve? Uh, definitely consistency and being able to um, – my endurance. So those are the biggest two things because I haven't had the opportunity to pitch a full season, so I don't know. You know, I just need to make sure my body's prepared to do that. It's never done that before. And so I definitely need to uh, – you know, I'm working hard to get in shape, things like that. But just being able to be consistent with every pitch. I want to be able to throw pitches where I want to throw them, all pitches off speed, you know, keep guys off balance. So that's one thing that I've really been working on in our pins and things like that. Awesome. So what do you think is the strongest aspect of your game right now that you you show off or that you're like really good at at least? Uh, I would have to say just my mentality. You know, you know, everyone has stuff and um, just my mentality of that that person in the box isn't going to beat me no matter what. You know, there's 12,000 people in the stands. There's thousands and thousands of people watching across the country. And there's just no way that uh, I'm just going to give up and let that person out beat me. You know, the only way they're beating me is, you know, they're better than me or, you know, they got lucky that time. Let's just say that. <laughs> and so uh, just that mentality, my mentality, that's, that's one thing for sure. Yeah, it's definitely right. about that confidence, man, for sure. Yeah, if you don't have confidence, you don't really have too much. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
So how much of an honor it is, uh, is it to you to play at such a respectable baseball program, producing people like Aaron Nola or DJ LeMahieu? Man, it, it's big time. I've, uh, uh, growing up, all you hear about is LSU. I really had no idea about baseball that much because uh, I wanted to play football. You know, I wanted to play football and things like that. But you always heard LSU, LSU. You know, they had these great guys. Then you get here and you hear these great stories. And then actually to be around them, you know, I'm here, but like I'm still starstruck when they, when you know someone walks by and I'm like, that's DJ LeMay or that's Will Harris. Like, you know, like those are guys, and uh, you know, it's an honor just to be able to come here and be a part of a great history. You know, a, a great group of people, a great alumni, and you know, things like that. And so, um, you know, I'm just I'm thankful to be here in this situation, and I'm definitely gonna take advantage of being here. Love to hear that, man. Great answer again. Um, and. So in 2018, I believe coming out of high school, you were drafted 38th round by the Cardinals. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, you met, you tried to go to LSU, which I mean, very understandable, um, just like improving yeah. your skills. So what do you feel like, and now you're, now you're a big prospect going into the next year's draft. And so what do you feel like is like a lot of, let's talk about just about like how much improvement you've seen in yourself and just the growth you've seen in yourself since then. Um, just like in these like short two years, even though you haven't been playing, you've still been like grinding and working out. Since high school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who? Uh, uh, oh, like <laughs> everything has changed. Everything, you know. Uh, I'm learning a lot. I didn't. I didn't play. I didn't pitch. I pitched on days they told me to pitch. I would play a position, and so pitching was just you know something I did when it was time for me to pitch. But now you know I, I have the ball in my hand every day. I'm with coach every day, and you know we're working every single day to get better and better. And so my game has changed tremendously. You know, I'm just learning and learning. I'm still learning to this day. And, uh, you know, just being able to do baseball every day is pretty cool because the more and more you learn, the more I soak in. I get to be around big league guys. I get to, you know, soak in their information. And so I'm just trying to make myself better each and every day. Of course, man. Love to hear that. And so when you enter the MLB draft again, uh, just tell all the MLB fans out there and all the, all the fan bases and teams, just tell them what are they getting in Jaden Hill from day one and and your career as a pro? Uh, they're definitely, they're, they're getting someone who's going to work hard, who, uh, who I'm not going to um, not take advantage of my opportunity. I'm definitely, I'm working hard when people aren't watching, when people are watching, and I, I, t- I take things very serious when it comes to, um, when it comes to playing ball. And, you know, someone who cares about their teammates, cares about people, the community, and things like that. You know, you're just getting someone who wants to be there, who wants to win, and who wants to give their all to uh, be the best. Definitely, man. So we're going to move on from the baseball aspect a little bit and just do just do a couple get to know you questions to wrap up. Um, just some right. questions. So if you had to pick one, what would you what would be your favorite ice cream flavor and favorite ice cream topping? Like go to. I'm definitely going. I like chocolate. I love chocolate. So I'm going to go with chocolate with M&M's. Chocolate with M&M's on top. Yeah. Like from Sonic. The blast. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Respect, man. And then uh this is this is a question I like to ask a lot of guys. What's like if you had to pick like a go to artist to listen to pregame, who is it? Young boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going young boy every time. Respect. Oh, okay. All right. So if you could li- relive one moment in your life, what would it be? Who dang, that's a good question. All right, I'm, I have two. I would go back to high school. I have, I have a lot actually. I, I would go back to I would go back to high school where we won our our super regional to go to the state championship at home. That that was pretty cool. That was the only time I've ever dog piled before. And so everyone in the city came. You know, it was just dope. That was a dope thing. I would go back to all American game in high school, my high school all American game because I honestly don't remember it. It went by so fast. So I would go back just so I could play it in slow motion. So I, I'm definitely going there. Or maybe a football game. Maybe one of the, uh, a rivalry football game. Those are definitely uh, those are definitely where I had to go back to. All right. Yeah. A lot that, of, was, that was tough. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of great moments in high school, man, for sure. Um, so if you could have one person play you in a movie of your life, who would it be? Say it again. If you could have one person play you in a movie of, of your life, who would it be? Any actor, whoever. 
Hey, y'all coming with it today. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I guess you just have to go Denzel Washington. Denzel, either, yeah, Denzel or Will Smith. Okay. Will Smith may, Will Smith may relate a little more. Denzel is hardcore. He bad, man. That's a bad man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have to go Will Smith. Will Smith would be more, you know, on my side. Okay. Great, awesome. Great choice. We're from Philly, so we, we love Will Smith, man. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. This the dude who actually does these shirts. He's from Philly. Philly oh, really? He's, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, staying with him. Like, oh, awesome. Hey, well, hopefully you're up here in a couple of years in, in a Phillies jersey. Uh, we hope. Yes, so. sir. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Jaden, for doing this with us, man. We really appreciate this opportunity, and we know you're busy, so. We really appreciate your time too. We're excited to see where your career takes you. We think we really think big things are ahead, and we think you're going to take the minors by storm and hopefully the big leagues by storm someday. Um, but a lot of work to be put in before then. We know you're really hard work and respect your mindset. So, thank you so much again, man. Is is there anything you want to say before we hop off? No, I man. I just really appreciate y'all having me. You know, and I hope y'all you're staying safe. You know, y'all got to stay safe and things like that. And I hope this stuff passes over really soon. Yeah, of course, man. Stay safe for, for you as well. All right. We'll let you go, Jaden. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, sir. I appreciate y'all having me. Of course. Of course. All right, man.